everyone, this is my three week postpartum update as well as Carter's three week update. Um, he turned three weeks yesterday, so he's exactly three weeks and one day today. Um, I guess I'll start with Carter and then I'll talk about me. So Carter is a really big boy. Um, we went to the hospital for his one week checkup and he was when he was released from the hospital he was seven pounds two ounces when we went for his one week checkup he was eight pounds one ounce and when we went for his two week checkup he was nine pounds five ounces and that might be a little off because the second time they measured him with his clothes on so he might be like a little less but he's basically gaining a pound a week and he also is growing one inch a week. So when we first went to the hospital, um, when we were released from the hospital, he was 19 inches. Our first doctor's appointment, he was 20 inches. And the second doctor's appointment, he was 21 inches. So when we go for his one month checkup next Tuesday, he'll probably be somewhere about 10 or 11 pounds and probably like 22 or 23 inches. So he's growing so fast and I'm almost like, sad because it seems like just yesterday he was this little even when I changed him on the changing pad like he used to didn't take up a lot of space because he was so teeny and now it's almost like he's stretching out and taking up like not all of the changing pad but like a lot of it I'm like oh he's getting so fast so quick and I just feel like he's just growing up right before my eyes almost like I didn't get to cherish his newborn moments and I know he's still a newborn but it's just like Oh, you're growing so quickly. Um, as soon as we left the hospital, well, like two to three days after we left the hospital, I noticed he started getting um, Malia. It's um, the little pimples baby gets on their face. It's actually not considered baby acne. I was doing some research. It's like in the baby acne category, but they don't actually call it baby acne. So the little white pimples are called Malia. And he got them like on his cheeks, um, on his forehead. And on his chin so nothing on his body just his face and basically they said just leave it alone and it'll go away so it's just now starting to clear up um he's three weeks and it's starting to clear up and go away they're not really pimples anymore they're just little bumps so it's really clearing up now i'll show you but he's asleep right now but i'll show you guys later um and i kept having to comb his hair so he wouldn't get cradle cap um the the dry skin in his hair, I almost had to wash it and comb it every day just to get all the dry skin out of his hair and his eyebrows. Um, it was kind of like anywhere hair was, it was like trying to form. So like every day I'm washing and brushing, washing and brushing, just keeping that dead skin out of his hair so he doesn't get cradle cap because I don't want my poo to have cradle cap. Um, all of his dead skin is almost done peeling off except his feet, like his um, ankle areas. Still has a little dead skin there so that's still kind of starting to peel off um yesterday we went to go get a jaundice test to see if he still had any jaundice because the doctor um was pushing on his legs and his tummy and he was still turning yellow to the touch so they didn't call us or anything about it so i'm assuming that he's fine um because they didn't like send us to take tests or anything she also gave me a vitamin D supplement since I'm breastfeeding. So I give that to him every day. He gets that vitamin D. Also, when we first left the hospital, his little eye was crusting. And they gave him this little tube of stuff to squirt in his eye. And I was like, this is impossible to use on a baby. It was so hard to get in his eye. But I did it. And then you had to do it three times a day for seven days. So it was really tedious just like remembering to put it in his eye three times a day. Um, just putting it in his eye period because he wouldn't open his eyes so I could put it in there but um, I did the best I could and his eye is not crusting anymore and he's doing really good um, he has the hiccups a lot so that kind of sucks but the gripe water is awesome um, I don't know if you guys watched my previous videos but I had this little kit from little noses and little ears and little eyes um, and they have gripe water. And as soon as I give it to them, hiccups are gone. Um, it's just awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Let's see. What else? Um, he's starting to be much more alert now. So he's waking up and like 
looking around and you know just staying awake longer so that's awesome because it's just neat to just see how you know how he interacts he doesn't really smile in his sleep he smiles all the time though it's like heart melting how much he smiles it's adorable and then um what else are you doing poo oh so I'm strictly breastfeeding so this is kind of about both of us so I'm strictly breastfeeding he hasn't had well he had formula one the first time when he was first born because I was recovering from my c-section but he hasn't had any formula since then so he's been on a strict breast milk diet only um and we are having fussy nights almost every single night I mean they said it was just gonna be a couple of days but he's just eating and eating and eating and I'm not sure if I'm overfeeding him I know they say you can't overfeed when you breastfeed but I feel like sometimes I am overfeeding him and um, I know he just might want to suckle sometimes so I do offer him the pacifier but he's not a big fan like sometimes he takes it sometimes he doesn't so I hope that I'm not overfeeding him um, and the fussy nights are just like terrible he's staying up from like 1 to 4 sometimes longer most of the time he's down by 4 though. So 4 o'clock is usually the latest that we're up and then he's asleep. But yeah, it's just terrible. He just cries and cries and cries. He won't take my breast. And I just have to basically rock him to sleep. But then he'll wake up because he's hungry because he really didn't eat anything because he was fussy. So it's just really like long nights. But once he does go to sleep around 3 or 4, he sleeps until like 8, sometimes 9 wakes up and eats and then goes back to sleep until 12 or 1 so I do get my rest back because I sleep when he sleeps so I get my rest back during the day so I usually, we usually get up at noon because we're up all night so we get to sleep back which is awesome um, what else is happening with my poo? he's boo-booing on a regular basis um, I mean he's really great and he's been really good with breastfeeding I had some sore nipples but for the most part his latch is good um, I have like bountyfuls of milk it's ridiculous how much milk I have I don't know if you guys can see but this breast is full because he needs to wake up and eat and this is like deflated <laughs> so yeah I have like plenty of milk so no problem in that category what else is happening Oh, so I attempted to take his newborn photos. Um, we got a couple of key photos, and I'm going to have to take some more because he's just so fussy. Um, he won't just chill and sit there and let me take them. But we got a couple of key ones, and um, they came out really nice. So I'll probably show you those um, in a separate video, uh, but they came out so gorgeous. But I'm going to take some more of his pictures. Um... Hopefully today it feel cropper. <laughs> what else is happening? His umbilical cord fell off on March 18th. Um, I thought it was getting infected because it was oozing a whole lot. So we actually did put some alcohol on it. I know they tell you not to, but we put alcohol on it because it was oozing so much. And I just cleaned it up really good. And that evening it fell off. After. Um, he still has like a lot of blood and stuff coming out of his umbilical cord so I'm still kind of cleaning it with alcohol and stuff um, just to make sure that it's clean but for the most part it's fine he is really 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 strong if I lay him on his stomach or if you put him like on your chest he pushes up and if you lay him in the bed he'll crawl literally across the bed he's so strong he pushes away from you, especially when he's breastfeeding and really hurts me sometimes. He'll take both his hands and just push away from my breast, but he'll still have it in my mouth, in his mouth, so it hurts. But he's super, super strong. Like, he flicks him, he'll like fling himself out of your arms if you're not holding him really tight. Because, oh my gosh, he's just the strongest baby in the world. It's amazing. Um, if you lay him on his stomach, he'll turn his head from side to side. I also noticed that he won't sleep on his back anymore. And I'm kind of scared because I know it's a big problem with sits and stuff. Sometimes he'll sleep on his side, but he prefers to sleep on his stomach. And I don't, um, I've never put him down on his stomach. I think it's from like 
falling asleep on our chest. So he's used to that, like hearing our heartbeat laying on his tummy. So when he's in the bed with me, I'll let him lay on his tummy just because I'm right next to him. But like in his cradle and stuff, I always try to put him on his slide. He won't sleep for more than an hour like that. So I'm really concerned because I don't want to put him on his crib, on his stomach. I know a lot of people have and the babies haven't had any problems. And he is lifting up his head and turning his head. He's even kind of like if you put him on his side, he'll roll over as much as he can to his stomach. So... I could put him on his stomach and not have a problem, but I'm just really scared about it. Um, he's still in newborn diapers, but some of his newborn clothes fit and some of them don't. So I think he's like in that in-between stage, but his 0-3 to three clothes still don't fit him yet. So um, He's really long, but he's not like fat. He's just long. But I think he's going to be really solid. Like not like a that but just like if you pick him up if you look at him you wouldn't think he was heavy but you pick up and you're like oh my gosh he's so heavy because even just from like yesterday to today I feel like he's way heavier like he might be 12 pounds at his one month checkup so Ooh, he's growing so fast um he hates his car seat he never wants to get it when I put him in his car he, he screams at the top of his lungs like I have to put him in the car seat 30 minutes to an hour before we leave for wherever we're gonna go um and i have to calm him down and talk to him and rock him and most of the time he falls asleep we went to borders the other day and he was really good in the car seat um in the stroller and i gave him a pacifier and he just he was really calm he did really good so i was happy that was like our milestone <laughs> that we accomplished so that was a good thing and he has a lot of my features people say that he so a lot of people say that he looks like me, like a boy version of me. And he has like a lot of my features. Um, I don't know if you guys ever noticed my ears, but they don't curl all the way right here. Like most people's ears curl. Mine just is like straight. So that's how his ear is. He just has like no curl ear. Um, he also has my eyes and my lips. But he has his daddy's hairline, so unfortunately he has a little receding hairline happening, so that's not cool. Um, but he has like a whole lot of my features, and he just spit up all over me. That's really gross, Carter. Yucky. Okay, and um, I'll show him to you, so you guys can see him. That's my poo. Trying to wake up. But I don't know if you guys can see how big he is. He's really heavy. Like, he's a big boy. So, that's my poo. I love him so much. Okay. So, let me see if there's anything else to talk about with him. I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, so I have to go back to work in May, and I'm really sad. Like, I wish I could spend all my life with him. I wish I could just be a stay-at-home mom and take care of him until I feel that he is old enough to go to daycare. Because it's like, it makes me sad. I don't want to put him in daycare. I wish I could just take care of him, like, just me. I don't even want, like, my grandparents and stuff watching him. Like, I love my baby so much. I don't want anyone around him. And I'm kind of selfish because I kind of miss being pregnant because I had him all to myself. But now that he's out, like, other people want to hold him and play with him. And I just kind of want to keep him all for me. So, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of selfish. <laughs> but, okay. So this is my postpartum. Um, when I was released from the hospital, I had to go for a one week checkup to get my staples removed. Um, the last time I was weighed, I was 173. And when I got weighed for my one week appointment, I was 153. So I lost 20 pounds just from having him. Um, that leaves me only 20 pounds to go to get to my pre-pregnancy weight. Which shouldn't be hard. If you just look at me, I don't even look... Like, I have 20 pounds to go. So, I mean, I might not lose that much weight. 
I know I have to work out my thighs. They get really, really big during my pregnancy. Um, so just so I can get in my jeans. But um, I might. I, I like the weight that I am. So we'll see what happens just as far as weight goes. Um, so I got my staples removed. The staples were really irritating and annoying when I had them. Um, after a week it had passed, it got to the point where they were like sticking me. Even though they were already in me, they were sticking me. It was really weird, but it hurt a lot. When they took them out, it was just like a little tingle. Like it didn't really hurt, almost like a pinch um, when they took them out. But I was so glad to get them out. Um, my incision is healing really, really nice. Um, you can barely see where they made the cut. Um, I'll show it to you guys in the picture. Probably in another video though. Um, but you can barely see where they made the cut or anything, so it's really clean and it looks really nice. Um, my stomach has drastically gone down. I've also been wearing the little bind that they gave me in the hospital where you kind of bind your belly. And that's actually giving me a lot of relief. Uh, I wear it every day. I wear it to bed. It's not really uncomfortable. It is kind of bulky under my clothes, but I don't mind just because it feels better with that on. Um, when I first got home, my recovery was, it was okay. For the most part, I could do most things on my own. I had ibuprofen um, to help with some of the pain, though, because I couldn't lay on my side for about a week. I had to lay on my back. My side still hurt even now. Um, like, if I breastfeed them on my side, my side hurts. If I lay a certain way on my side, my side hurts. So I'm either laying on my back or my stomach most of the time. And if I'm on my side, I'm curled up because it's still it's still painful, the muscles there. Um, when I first got home, it hurt to walk for long periods of time. So I had to sit down a lot because I couldn't walk. Um, another thing that... Okay, another thing that um, hurt was going up and down the stairs. Um, in my house, the kitchen's upstairs. So I have to go upstairs to eat. Everything else is downstairs, which is great, but I had to go upstairs to eat. And people at my house, you know, everyone was working. My grandma was here, but she was sick when I first got home, so I really didn't have anyone to help me. So um, going up and down the stairs, it hurt. Um, sometimes if I didn't, I try not to take the ibuprofen a lot, but I really needed it because if I didn't take it, I would be in so much pain, I'd be crying. And I really can't describe the pain. It was just like it jumped on me and held me down. It just, it was terrible. So, um, I ended up taking like one ibuprofen a day just to kind of get through the day because it hurt so badly. Um, but three weeks out, I feel great. I'm walking. I can lift Carter because I couldn't lift his car seat and I couldn't drive for two weeks. So I can pick him up in his car seat. I can drive now. Um, I feel so much better. Um, I have so much more energy. I haven't taken the ibuprofen in like two weeks really. I haven't taken it all this week. Um, I just feel like a whole new person. So the pain for the most part is gone and I feel awesome. Um... The area where I had the C-section is still really tender and some parts are numb. And I was reading that that numbness doesn't really go away. So that kind of sucks that I'm going to be numb all my life. But they said you can do different massages and stuff and it'll help the numbness to go away. So we'll see what happens with that and I'll kind of update you guys and let you know. Um, it hurt really bad to cough, to sneeze to laugh, anything. It hurt my incision. Really, really terrible. Um, it would make me cry that it hurt so bad. Um, that doesn't hurt anymore, though. Um, what else? My little pool is ready to eat. I did end up getting stress marks in the very end. I have some on my side, and I have some by my belly button. Um, what else? Oh, right after he was born, I broke up. My whole face broke out. I don't know if you guys can see it on here. My chin, around my mouth, everything 
broke out so terribly. So it's just now like starting to clear up. But I broke out so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, like acne city, like puberty all over again. It sucked. So, um, so that was that was horrible. That I just broke out everywhere. But that is it about me, really. Um, I'm pretty much fully recovered. I know they say it's six weeks, but I feel awesome right now. And um, that's about it. So I'm going to post another update of Carter, just of like his two weeks, three weeks, just so you guys can see more of him. And I'm going to show you guys my belly. And I believe he's awake. You want to say hi, Pooh? Say hi. No? Go back to sleep? You're not going to say hi? So, um, I'll show you my belly and then we'll be done. Okay, bye. So, this is the belly wrap that I use. And it just wraps my stomach. It looks like that. And this is the one the hospital gave me. And I'll take it off. And this is my after belly. I don't know if you can see my stretch marks. Gross. But this is after. So as you can see, it's not that big. And I'll show you my stretch mark scar. That's my scar from surgery. That's what it looks like. And that's all that's left. This is the other side.